How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be modifying this new workbench that I got from Home Depot to tailor make it exactly for my needs in my new garage workshop. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that my garage is undergoing a whole remodel slash revamp to prepare for my next big project on the channel. And in the previous video, I coated the garage here in a nice epoxy floor coating to give the garage not only a better aesthetic look to make it look more of like a workshop, but to also help, you know, just give it a better uh, characteristic for being a workshop in case we spill things and things like that. But in this video, I'm gonna be continuing on the remodel of the garage here and the reorganization kind of by showing you guys how I'm gonna be modifying this new workbench I got from Home Depot. So with this whole garage remodel going on, it got me thinking to get a few things that I've always wanted that I never had before in my previous setup. And one of those things was definitely a nice solid workbench to be able to mount a vise on and just more ergonomically build things, you know, so I don't have to bend over or hunch over. I can put things on here and it'll be nice and easy. Uh, so, I, over the past few weeks, I started searching all the different stores, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., etc. Found a few at Harbor Freight that I liked. They have um, two workbenches that they really sell, one of which is wooden, similar to this one, but it's more for like woodworkers and it had like peg holes and different things like that. And it was a little bit um, more than what I needed um, as far as some of the features. And then they also had a metal one at Harbor Freight that was nice too, but I didn't want the metal one. I wanted this wood one because I could easily add things to it. I could add some hooks to screw things in um, and hang things off of and you know on the front, on the sides. So I figured the wooden one was a little bit more easy, easily modifiable to tailor it to what I want it to be and the features for it to have. What I ended up going with was the one from Home Depot and believe it or not this one was only $80 and it's pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, it's designed to be a semi-portable workbench for contractors and it's really easy to assemble. It really took only like two minutes. Um, the legs here you can see have large bolts um, mounted to them and they basically can swing up and fold in and that bottom shelf can be removed so you can just pack it up in your truck if you need a more portable solution. But for me, I thought it was a perfect candidate um, to modify to make it exactly what I wanted it to be in a workbench. So that's why I bought this for 80 bucks and then I decided to spend a little bit more on some materials so that I can modify it to give it exactly what I want it to be for my workbench. So the workbench is really nice. Um, it's built out of, I mean, it, you can definitely see in certain areas that it's an $80 workbench. Um, like some of the wood in certain areas is a little bit rough. Um, and you can see here, this bottom shelf is just stapled to this frame here. Um, and so the staples kind of leave a mark. And then these are from the tie downs in the packaging. So they kind of left a mark. But to me, that wasn't a huge deal. I will get over that. And then I believe most of the other wood on the workbench here is birch. I'm not a woodworker, so correct me if I'm wrong if you see this. And then the top here is kind of like, I want to say particle board, but I don't know if that's the correct um, phrase for that type of wood. But it's not the same type of wood as down here because it doesn't have the grains in it. Um, and then basically what I plan to do with this workbench is to make it a more permanent workbench. So I'm going to screw in the bottom shelf so that the legs won't, you know, ever collapse for whatever reason. Um, so that'll make that permanent. And then I'm basically going to build a backsplash off of the rear of the workbench here and make a mounting system um, out of some of these uh, two by sixes for a pegboard. So it's going to have a nice frame on the back coming off the back and then the pegboard will mount flush to that. And then there'll be a slight overhang, which is what I got this um, I believe this is one by eight, I can't remember exactly, um, flat board here as like an overhang so then I can mount some of these nice LED strip lights that I got. So that's the plan. I did have a nice sketch down on paper um, when I was designing this thing out with all the measurements, but I seem to somehow misplace it. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into actually making this thing and uh, update you guys as I go.
One thing I forgot to mention actually is in the when I'm all said and done with this, I'm actually going to paint it. So for the uh, top shelf and bottom shelf, I got that nice um, bed liner coating. I really kind of fell in love with that stuff ever since I used it on the front pedal assembly on the go-kart. So I'm going to put the bed liner coating on the shelving here so that it's a little bit more durable. And then the whole rest of the um, structure, the wood, I'm going to coat in a nice latex paint in a similar color to the floor here so that'll match. So it'll be kind of a nice combo of black, gr this gray, and then the white from the pegboard. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint the bottom shelf since I can remove it and more easily mask it off than if I screw it in first and then have to paint it. All right, so I just laid down the first coat of the bed liner coating on the bottom shelf. Um, so now while that's drying, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is start building the frame for the back of the workbench here. So that's why I had Home Depot when I was there, had them cut three equal 33 inch pieces of two by six, or two by four, two by six, no, two by four, two by four. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount those. I'm gonna do one on this corner, one in the middle, and then one on that corner to give us the uh, first framing point for the uh, backsplash pegboard. All right, a little progress update for you guys. As you saw in the time lapse, I was building the three posts here, or connecting them to the back of the workbench. Um, so those are all nice and secured down. It was a little challenging at first. I had to figure out a way to hold them up and screw them in um, so that they stayed in the position I wanted them to. So the, basically the method that I did was, you probably saw me, I laid the table down forward and then I just screwed in one screw and then that would allow me if I needed, um, you know, adjustment left to right, that's locked in, but at least the rotation I could adjust still a little bit with just one screw in. So once I had the one screw in and it was good, then I cinched that screw down a little bit harder to hold the position. And then I went ahead and put in the second screw to support the uh, post here. So then also what I did was I did two screws per post. I might do a third, but I don't know if that probably is overkill because um, this isn't a load bearing, um, I mean, minus the tools that I hang on it, but that's not gonna be a lot in the light fixture, but it's not a huge load bearing um, object here. Um, and then what I also did was to support the posts um, because these, this, this back part on the um, workbench was only su supported by nails. So I went ahead and screwed in a few screws along the way to cinch this back, mini backsplash on the workbench to this part of the uh, workbench here. So now the next step, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm, oh here, before I cut to uh, make more progress, here's what it kinda looks like with the beginning. Let me lean this back so it doesn't fall over. So that's kinda like what it is starting to look like with the uh, pegboard on there. So I think it looks pretty cool. So now the next step is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build, or I'm gonna use this long piece, which was the remaining part, 
from when they cut those three. It's not perfectly long enough to match up to the flush on end to end, but it's long enough to meet at least both of these in the middle on the end. So I'm gonna use this one as the back attachment point, and then I'll make, I'll cut, I have some more uh, wood here, I'll cut some more for the front one, and then that'll give us plenty of room um, for our large overhang piece to mount into um, on the top up there like that. So that'll be the next step. The only other thing that I noticed was this wood here, um, it was already cracking, but it cracked, I don't know if it, when they cut it or if it was like that when I got it from the store um, before they cut it, but I'm thinking of going to the store real quick and grabbing some wood glue and just filling this in. Um, you know, since this is a permanent furniture piece here for the garage um, and I'm gonna be screwing the pegboard in, I don't want this thing to like split in two when I do that. So I might go just get some wood glue real quick and fill that well um, and then that can dry before I get to having to actually use that part of the wood. Alrighty, so went to Home Depot, got some of this Gorilla wood glue. Uh, and just kind of put in the cracks and then wiped it down so it kind of was flush but still filled in the crack. I got a little spot down there I gotta fill. So I might do that in some areas. There's a little bit of one right here, but I'm just being nitpicky. I mean, I don't think it'd really be a big deal, but also got a Dr. Pepper because it has been like insanely hot today. Santa Ana dry blow dryer winds. Also another interesting thing is like this wood is still very much leaking a lot of sap. I never realized how much like lumber, even after it was cut, just like leak sap all over the place, like out of this little knot right here in the wood. So, but anyways, we'll keep on chucking. Uh, the next part, I'm gonna take this piece and screw it onto the back up here, and then I'll cut another one of the proper size and do it on the front, so then we kinda got like a sandwich thing going on with these guys. And then from there, we can put our flat piece over top. Alrighty, another update for you guys. Um, so I got the whole, pretty much the whole back splash section finished, at least the framework for the black, back splash. And I say that five times fast. So I got all three uprights, and then I did the rear um, support, the front support, and I also, if you can see, I did two sandwich pieces. So there is a sandwich piece. That's the middle post, and then another sandwich piece, just to give it some more rigidity, and um, won't uh, there won't be as much flexion on this front piece here, and also a few that will give a few extra mounting points for our uh, flat piece that's going to go as our overhang. So I think that's going to be the next step. Um, I also screwed in the legs so the legs can no longer pivot, um, with, even without this middle shelf, but. The middle shelf is almost dry, so I'm gonna be putting this back in and then I'm gonna screw that in as well. So that'll probably be what I do next, actually, and then I'll work start working on the overhang. So I just peeled the masking tape, or i.e. duct tape, off because I didn't have masking tape. And I'm pretty happy with the results on this lower shelf here. So only had a little bit of bleed through, um, which isn't gonna matter because I'm gonna paint over this anyways uh, with that gray. Um, so pretty happy with that came out really nice. I mean, I literally just had it sitting under a tree with sap and leaves falling on it, and I mean, it still turned out really nice. Like I was saying earlier, this bed liner coating is really resilient. Um, it's not like normal paint, because um, it has a textured finish to it, so it's a little bit easier to um, get away with poor painting conditions. So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw this shelf down there and uh, screw this guy in permanently.
another update for you guys here. So I got the pegboards cut. They are not perfect just because as you saw, I was using that jigsaw and it jiggles around a lot. So it's hard to get a perfectly clean cut, but I don't really have any other tools suitable to do a cut like that. I'm not, like I said, a woodworker, so I don't have a table saw, which would be ideal for this, or even a circular saw would be better, but I do not have those. So they match up decently. Um, I might have to trim down a little bit more in the middle here, but I think I'm just gonna do the best I can to get these guys to match up and so that they're even. Um, I might have to clean up some of the the glue, remaining glue might be pushing this one up a little bit. So you can see they're kind of mismatched in the middle there a little bit, but not too bad. Um, and my lengths, they came out a little bit long. Um, so uh, not, not horrible, but just a tad, just because I eyeballed it. Um, but it's turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing I'm not happy with is the fact that this board I put up here is warped. So stupid Home Depot, of course, sell you warped wood. Um, I thought I checked this before I bought it, but I'm pretty sure I did. And it was just one of those things where every board was warped. So I just picked the um, best, best case of all, the, what are the, the lesser of two evils, I guess, of all the evils of warped wood in this scenario. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. I might put like an extra little like just trim piece that kind of surrounds the edge of this and that may maybe hide the warped nature to this uh, overhang piece. But it's coming out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so, you know, the only thing is I just have to get this pegboard situated and get those kind of lined up or else that'll bug me. So I think what I'm gonna do for now, um, while I still have some time today, is I'm gonna paint the uh, main um, countertop area or wood uh, workbench area. I'm running out of words here, so I'm going to paint that with the other with the same bed liner coating. I had that with the uh, bottom shelf. Man, I cannot talk right now. And then I think eventually I'm also going to paint the pegboard so that we just have two colors, gray and black. And I think that would go pretty well together, and it would hide some of the imperfections on the pegboard. Um, when I cut it too because there are some spots that chipped off as well so but pretty happy with this how it's turning out so here's kind of like side view and run from the back another thing that I'm going to add that I kind of noticed after I put this rear frame on is since this kind of overhangs just a tad from the um, you know where the leg is so you can see the legs there you got all this weight here to prevent this from tipping over, even though this is gonna be up against a wall, I might just put a few little like L brackets or like feet on the bottom there to kind of extend it so less of a chance of tipping over. Um, but I think for now, I'm just gonna paint the countertop or main workbench and then uh, we'll see how that goes. So got the workbench all painted, at least the top counter and the bottom shelf. Um, so now I masked off the black so we won't get paint on that. And um, now we're just sanding down. My wife Rachel is helping me out today. Um, so now we're just sanding down the wood, getting rid of some of the rough edges before we go ahead and paint this guy. The uh, gray color that is very close match to the gray floor and uh, it'll come out looking pretty good. And in the meantime, I decided um, while I was getting the paint for this, that I thought I would get a little bit extra paint and we're gonna paint this whole wall that's blue and all the way going over here. That's gonna go gray as well, same color as the floor. So I just gotta move all this stuff away from the walls so that we can set up a tarp to uh, paint it and then take all the stuff off the walls. So 
added a little extra project today along with the workbench. So just when I thought the garage was getting all nice and organized again, it turns back into chaos. Everything's just everywhere right now, but getting the wall all disassembled, or not disassembled, but just clean and clear from all the posters. Gotta take down my model cars. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend the line here that you see where it stops. I'm just gonna have it go all the way to the end of the wall here so it's kind of one continuous piece of nice gray paint. And I gotta take this pegboard off too. But it'll look pretty good when we're done. And Rachel started on the uh, painting process for the workbench here. I think the gray looks pretty nice. So it's gonna look good with the gray-black combo and uh, see how it looks when it's done. We'll keep you guys updated. Alrighty, another update for you all. So the workbench has now been fully painted in the nice elemental gray uh, paint code color from Bear. Um, it looks really good. My wife Rachel did an awesome job. She put two coats of the latex paint on here and it looks really nice. Really came out good with the finish, especially after we sanded it down. So it's gonna look especially good once we put the black pegboard on. It's gonna match really well with the top counter and bottom shelf um, in that same black color. And then once I do that, that's actually one of the strip lights I bought. So I'll mount, I have two of those, so I'll mount both of those underneath here using some like eye hooks or, or eye bolts. Um, and then the wall over here looks really nice. Came out good with the gray. So it's kind of drying so you can kind of see some of the different areas where it's wet right now. But once it dries, it'll all blend. The gray came out really good. So I think it looks a lot better than the blue that was over here before. Um, just one nice uniform color. So look, came out pretty good. We went all the way to the corner here. So tomorrow I will come back once this is all dried and uh, come back out here and get all this organized, get the workbench set up and put in the corner over there. And we will start rolling and this workshop is gonna slowly come together in the next few days here. So I will uh, post one final update on the workbench once I have it all set up with the pegboard and the lights on it and that will conclude this video. Oh yeah, and Zoe also helped today too. Get some pain in there. everyone so the workbench is now complete so the pegboard is mounted the lights are mounted as you can see the power strip underneath is mounted which is what the lights are plugging into and I also got those magnetic uh, bar strips uh, mounted on the front here nice and evenly spaced all symmetrical looking uh, everything came out really good I was really happy with the paint it's got a nice gloss to it because it's the eggshell interior paint um, and then of course the countertop or workbench cover top um, that bed liner coating on the top here the bottom shelf and the pegboards was awesome um, the biggest issue I had um, with this whole building thing was right at the end here um, I couldn't get I didn't perfectly cut the pegboards to size because they came in four feet sections and I had to cut them down to three feet each because this is a six foot wide workbench um, 
and so my cuts weren't exactly perfect so I couldn't get them to exactly line up but I got it pretty dang close I mean you can see my cuts a little rough in the middle but using a jigsaw on something like this thin it vibrates it like crazy so it's hard to get a good cut like I said earlier I'm not a woodworker so I don't have like a table saw or even a circular saw which would be more ideal for that um, but it came together really nicely I love how the lighting looks with it and just the color combo the black and gray it goes really good with the floor and now the walls too so now I can finally start loading this thing up with uh, tools and just other stuff that I've got spread out over the garage here I got to put up some back some of my posters of course my Eleanor poster is gonna go back up um, somewhere in the garage here um, but then it'll be cool the reason why like I said earlier is because I got this wood one is because in the future if I want to add anything um, to the outside like add some hooks to hang things or just various trinkets here and there it's really easy just to screw things into the wood um, so it's gonna be cool going forward if I want to add something and so I basically have you know the main workbench area this bottom shelf and then I didn't even think about it till now but I kind of have this top shelf also to store some stuff on there because I screwed that in pretty good it's mounted pretty solid so it could hold some weight but turned out pretty good so I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me kind of custom making my own workbench kind of tailor making it to my specific uh, wants for a workbench with the backboard or the the pegboard as a backsplash the lighting and everything um, in the description below I will put a price breakdown of all the materials needed to make a workbench like this if you're curious in making one for yourself I got pretty much everything from Home Depot um, minus those bar strips are from Harbor Freight but um, if you have a Harbor Freight near you, um, there's a coupon out for uh, if you buy anything, you get one of those free with any purchase. So you can go there, shop twice, and get yourself two of those to go with the workbench. But uh, if you guys have any comments or questions about the workbench, I'd be happy to answer them for you if you leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate your viewership. If you haven't already, subscribe for more because the next video is going to be the big project announcement for the channel. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. So thanks again guys for watching and I will see you guys in that big announcement video.